not is still the characteristic impedance of the transmission line by itself. The difference between Z0 and Zn is shown here. The characteristic impedance, Z0, only relates a positive traveling wave, a tr positive traveling voltage wave, to a positive traveling current wave. So we use it here to relate V not plus to I not plus. And remember back in the time domain we said Z not is V1 plus to I1 plus. We could also say it's equal to V1 minus over I1 minus. So individual, individually traveling voltage and current waves. On the other hand, the input impedance is a value that is useful in the sinusoidal steady state since all the reflections have already happened. Z in is the ratio of the total voltage, which accounts for both the positive and the negative traveling waves, to the total current. So Z in is equal to Z at position D, total voltage to total current. And now let's come up with an expression that we can actually use in our calculations. So V naught plus E to the J beta D, that's our positive, positive traveling phasor. Here is our negative traveling phasor. And for the current, we can relate that to the voltage. So we have V naught plus E to the J beta D minus, since it flows in the opposite direction, has a direction associated with it, V naught minus E to the minus J beta D over Z naught. There are a few things we can do to this equation to put it in a form that is easier to use. First, we can write V naught minus, wherever it shows up, we can write it as the reflection coefficient of the voltage at the load times V naught plus. Then we can start to cancel uh, any V naught plus terms in the numerator and the denominator. And we can also pull out this Z naught to the beginning. So if we do all that, we're going to get, well, Z naught. I'll put it here. And we get E to the J beta D plus the voltage reflection coefficient at the load, E to the minus J beta D over e to the j beta d minus the voltage reflection coefficient e to the minus j beta d. Finally, if we write the reflection coefficient as zl, if we plug in these actual values, and then if we use also Euler's identity, to write out the exponential in terms of sines and cosines, we get the final form that we're going to use. Z in is Z naught, Z L cosine beta D plus J Z naught sine beta D, and all of this over Z naught cosine beta D plus J Z L sine beta D. This form for the input impedance is easier to use because if we know Z naught and we know Z L and the distance we want to evaluate Z in, then we can easily plug all those numbers in and we can get Z in. Let's consider a couple examples to get a feel for how the input impedance changes along a transmission line. For simplicity, let's start with a matched load. Before Lando's accident during the Battle of the Death Star, the old antenna was probably installed in such a way that it was matched to the transmission line. In that case, what was the input impedance along the transmission line? <laughs> 